Welcome back to Barnes & Music. My name is Barney. I'm a classical composer and the founder director of Barnes & Music. I live five years in France as a student studying counterpoint and harmony. Unfortunately, when I was there, I was exploited and I have had six months of my wages stolen from me and over $2,000, euros rather, uh, in legal fees that were also stolen from me. This video is for anyone that intends to study in France and work, or just, I don't know what you're going to do in France, but you're, you will have to work. There is a high, high risk of exploitation. It runs rampant in, on the French soil. And I sincerely hope that other people can benefit from this, and I can maybe prevent someone else from having to go through what I've had to go through, which is hell on earth. Let's listen to some music. Exploitation of foreigners in France is very, very common to the point that you may not even realize it. I think a lot of French people don't even realize it's taking place because it's just so normalized. Okay. The reality is a lot of people, when they come to France, like myself, for studying, they put a lot, a lot of effort to get there. So they're not just going to pack up and leave. So what that means is they have a higher threshold for dealing with things that are really unacceptable. Okay. Let's first look at work contracts, okay? That is the first place you will get exploited in France. Work contracts may be legal, but they're often created in a way to get the most out of you without you realizing. Let's take a look at one of my contracts. It's in French, but I'll, I'll, I'll help you translate. I'm going to read this slowly in French, and then I will translate. So this is a contract from Subvedo, which is in a, um, a veterinarian school in France that has multiple sièges, we say, multiple spots. And I was at the, the Paris location. One quick note, note that this contract is one page long. That is a red flag. Contracts are usually at least three pages long at least two to three. And the most honest contract I've ever had, I'll show later, is six pages, okay? So if a contract is one page long, there's something fishy. Now, I know in America, we don't typically have contracts, especially for you know fast food or, or stuff like that. They don't do contracts. But in France, it's required by law, there must be a contract in place. Never ever work anywhere in France unless you have a contract in place. One of the first places they'll get you is with the salary as well as the vacations. L'intervention aura lieu du 20 septembre au 30 juin 2022. Moyennant la somme brute horaire de 27,5 euros dans laquelle sont inclus 10% d'indemnité de précarité d'emploi et 12% pour congé payé. Now, what this is, I honestly don't even know if it's legal because it is so nefarious, but you would not know it unless you know what to look for. Okay? So keep in mind, even if you can speak and read French or fluent in French, if you don't know to look for these traps you're going to fall victim to them. I think most French people, they grow up and when they have their first job, they'll show someone in their family and they will look for them. Okay, so, you know, what can you do? So what is wrong with this contract? Well, let's look at how it starts. L'intervention au lieu de blah, blah, blah. Basically what it means is your assignment 
uh, will take place between September 20th, 2021 and uh, June 30th, 2022. Okay, they have to specify the dates. Has to be done. Then they give the salary, brut, horaire, brut is, um, you know, before taxes. Okay? This is normal. Okay? Here's where it gets really fishy. Don laquelle sont inclus, in which is included. Okay? Dix per cent d'indemnité de précarité d'emploi. We'll get to the other part in a second. What this is, is so in France, we have two types of contracts. We have a CDD, CDD, and a CDI, which is spelled CDI in English. So a CDD is a contract with a fixed end date. And as a foreigner in France, you're almost always going to have these contracts. What it means is you are given an assignment to work in a school till end of June, end of August, something like that. Okay, there's a fixed date. Versus the CDI, or CDI as we say in English, which is basically like having tenure. Okay, it basically means you can't get fired. You can, but it's, it's very complicated, okay, very costly for the company. Okay, and the CDI is a desired contract, of course, because after you pass your trial period, you basically can't get fired, and then you can have some stability in your life. And this is also dangerous for you as a foreigner, is you're going to have trouble finding permanent housing if you don't have a CDI. Because most, um, m most people who are trying to rent out, they want to see someone, okay, they're always going to have that sum, you know, because labor laws are very strict in Paris, so they don't want to risk it, okay? But as a foreigner, especially if you're there for a short term, you most definitely will likely have a CDD, okay? But I think a lot of French people are getting CDDs these days. Now, what is this 10% d'indemnité, I cannot pronounce that word, d'indemnité de précarité d'emploi? What this is, so when you offer a CDD, CDD, so a contract that has a fixed duration, like the end of June, the French government, in order to discourage these kinds of contracts because they want people to have continuous employment, what they do is they basically give a sort of fine towards the company which means they have to pay out 10% of your global salary. Okay, so what that means is, let's say over the course of one year you worked in a school, let's say total you made $1,000 throughout the whole school year. At the end of your work contract, your school would have to, play, would have to pay 10% of that sum, so $100, to you. Okay, and it's kind of, you know, just as a token, the fact that they put you on unemployment because once your contract is over, you should be able to get unemployment, but they are cracking down on unemployment, especially towards foreigners. So you may find that you're going to work your ass off and you might not get unemployment. Okay, and look, French unemployment is a nightmare even for French people. Okay, well, I don't know. So the 10% is the prime de precarité, okay? Now, unfortunately, a lot of times teachers don't get it. I don't know why, but they don't get it, okay? So, for example, my first year in Paris, I worked at a bilingual school, and we'll look at that contract uh, in another episode because it was actually an honest contract. And at the end of my time, I got 10% of my total salary was paid out to me. So I think it was about $2,000. So I was like, oh, yeah, hell yeah, you know, it's awesome. But... I couldn't go on to unemployment until I had used up that $2,000. Okay, so just be, carry, don't, uh, uh, just be careful. Don't be too excited to get the prime de precarité because it's just a stopgap until you go on to unemployment. But of course, if you get a job right away, then okay, cool, you get the $2,000 or however much it is. Okay, so it's the prime de precarité, it's 10% of your global salary for the year or however, or however long you worked. Okay, let's pay to the end. However, 
in your contract, they have to address this, okay? Do you get the prime de carité or not? And this is very, very regulated by law, okay? So what does this say? Let me read it one more time. Les, sorry. L'intervention aura lieu le 20 septembre 2021 au 30 juin 2022. Moyennant la somme brute aurait de 27,5 euros, dans laquelle sont inclus 10% d'indemnité des précarités d'emploi. So basically, what this is saying in the contract is that my salary of $27 an hour, $27.50 an hour, okay, already includes the 10% that they were supposed to pay at the end of my time. That is very, I do not know if that's legal. It's definitely very scummy because what you, you think, okay, I'm getting a salary. Okay, 27, ugh, you know, for Paris, I think it's, at least before COVID, it's, it's a reasonable rate. But they already included the sum that they're supposed to give you afterwards because they put you in that precarious situation. They are including it in your hourly rate. Again, I don't know if that's legal, but it doesn't really matter because in this case, I didn't understand. I don't know what happened. I must have read it and it seemed normal. Or for someone who hasn't mastered French, it, it doesn't, I don't know. Like, I think I thought that I would still, I don't know. Okay. So what does this mean? Is the salary they're giving you is not a pure salary. It already includes stuff that's supposed to be given afterwards. So really, what is the true salary? Well, I'm wondering what it is. Is it even 20 euros at this point? But it gets worse. Oh, yes, it gets worse. So it includes 10% for the prime de précarité and 12% for the holidays. So congé payé for paid holidays. Okay, and France is very strict about the holidays. There's lots of laws about getting paid for the holidays. Typically, it doesn't matter if you're not supposed to work that day, you still get paid. I, I don't know the official law, but basically what this um, scummy employer did is they included the vacation pay in my hourly rate. So what this means is whenever there was a vacation in France, and there's many, many vacations, I didn't get paid. All right, so the first thing to watch out for is to read the contract, okay? Make sure that you take the contract and you go home, okay? You read the contract when you get home. Do not let your future employer try to, to ah, they're so dishonest these days. So Especially in France, I really found some really dishonest employers. I don't know why, okay? I don't know if just Paris is like that. But I found some really, really dishonest employers. But I just, I was so blind because I thought, well, I don't understand, you know. And I had a good level in French, but I thought maybe I just don't understand the culture. Maybe I imagined it. And they will take advantage of that. Okay. Let's look at another contract. Here's another contract from SDMI. Do not work for this organization. They stole six months of my salary. I, justice is gone. I tried to find justice with the, the legal system to do it the right way. I paid a lot of money to a lawyer. She didn't really do anything. And I just lost the money and I lost a lot of time. 
And I really thought I would have this money coming in to help me as I transitioned back to America because I, I, you know, I couldn't survive in France anymore. Uh, and then I never even got that sum. So I was just lied to all around. So I, I, please let me know if this is useful at all because I have so much more to share, but if it's not useful, then just don't say anything because <laughs> I won't even bother. Um, so here, SDMI, okay, they're in Massey, which is the south of Paris. It says, remuneration, that means y y the pay, okay? Monsieur Johnson Barney, okay, note in French, we put last names in all capitals. It's, it's a code in French. In all capitals. Monsieur Johnson Barney percevra une rémunération horaire brute de 30 euros. Comprenons les congés payés. Are you starting to see a trend? This is not normal. Okay, in France, I just, I don't even know if this is legal, but it's definitely very, very scummy. But they are assuming that as a foreigner, you're not going to properly read the contract. Okay, and even if you do, even if you know French, like you don't, it doesn't make sense, you know, it doesn't seem, like, how could someone be so scummy up front? So what does this mean? Percevra, um, it, it's hard to translate this, but it means you'll receive, okay? It, it's very hard to translate directly, but basically means you're going to receive this salary, okay? Horaire is hourly, and brut, of course, is um, just before taxes. Okay, percevra une rémunération horaire brute de 30 euros, comprenant les congés payés. So what that means is including, including the holidays. This is very um, disturbing because keep in mind, if you're working in a school, which you may if you speak English, I mean, you can understand the video, you speak English. If you're working in school districts, there's a lot of vacation. There are basically two weeks of class and then, sorry, six weeks of class and then two weeks of vacation. That's the basic model. Six weeks of class, two weeks of vacation, six weeks of class, etc. Okay? It's, not, it's sometimes a little bit more, but it's basically that. So there's a lot of time that you're going to be on vacation. You would think you're getting paid. And for most employers that were honest, I was getting paid. As a teacher, it's expected. Okay, they don't pay that much, but you get paid for the vacation. Like, hey, that's why we do, that's why we teach. No, just kidding. Um, but you may do teaching because you want to study and having those breaks will help you study. And I'm glad I was able to do teaching because I was able to study at the same time. However, it's very uncomfortable when you're not getting paid for the vacation. So you're going to have two weeks of time that you will not have payment coming through. So then you think, okay, well, then I'll save. You're not going to be able to save on 30 euros an hour, okay? You're going to spend it on basic living stuff. You're not going to be able to save, okay? French people can't even save, okay? So how are you as a foreigner going to come to France and be able to save? You're not going to be able to save, certainly not in Paris. You're not going to be able to save your money, okay? Whatever money you're going to have is just for living while you're there, okay? What was the other thing we had to look out for? The, la prime de précarité. Okay, I cannot pronounce that. But basically, it's the 10% sum that they have to give you at the end of a CDD, a CDD, contract that has an expiration date, as opposed to CDI, which doesn't have an expiration date. It's like tenure. You're looking for that 10% prime de précarité. Let's watch. Le contrat de Monsieur Johnson, again, capitals for the last name, Barney, étant un contrat d'usage dans la profession, il ne pourra prétendre à la fin de celui-ci à une indemnité de précarité conformément à l'article blah, blah, blah. This is very, very wordy, even for a French person. Even a French person would be like, ah, okay, I get it, but I have to really use your brain. They do that on purpose. Right? Why do lawyers make these the really complex contracts? Well, because they don't want to get sued. Or they want to be able to say, oh, well, it's in the contract. You didn't read the contract. And trust me, when you are exploited in France, good luck finding justice. You, you, I'm good luck. There are systems that are supposed to function, but they do not function for foreigners. Okay? So what does this mean? Okay. The first part is just BS. Okay, because Barney 
is in a certain type of contract in his profession. It's just the, the justification for what they're about to do, which is wrong. What it says, il ne pourra prétendre. Be careful, prétendre does not mean pretend. Okay, I think it can in instances, but in this case it doesn't. And that really trips up a lot of English speakers. Prétendre, pretend, it means claim. He cannot claim or benefit from or be entitled to. Okay? So, he can, and pourra is pouvoir, which is kind. Of, so, il ne pourra prétendre. It's missing a pas, P-A-S. Pas possible. Il ne pourra prétendre à la fin de celui-ci à une indemnité de précarité. Okay. So basically what it means is he, myself, Barney, will not be able to get the prince de precarité. Okay. So I'm going to be working here, and as soon as I'm done at this job, I'm going straight to unemployment. If there is un unemployment, France is getting very irritated with the number of foreigners in their country or the number of foreigners that are supposedly on unemployment. But the thing is, as you're going to see from these contracts, they give out to foreigners predominantly contracts that are destined towards unemployment. If you give out a contract like this one, that is, we saw as you ha it ends at the end of June, well, obviously, I need to go on unemployment. There's not going to be any work in July or August. August, definitely not. Not even as a tour guide. Okay, maybe, but I mean, okay. Really think in advance. Don't screw yourself over like I did. You got to read that contract meticulously. Assume that there's a piège. Assume that there's something off in that contract. Thank you.